I'm here to, to, to try to express a little bit or to tell about my personal uh, um, perspective and uh, experience uh, and lecture about these two main uh, works which are part of my life, which are the Axis Syllabus and the Real-Time Composition. So the Axis Syllabus you know already. And the Real-Time <coughs> Composition is, uh, is as well a toolbox for improvisation and composition, which comes from this uh, Portuguese choreographer, which is called João Fiadeiro, and he lives in Lisbon, and uh, he also comes from the same environment as Frey. He, they are the same age. Uh, he, he, he also comes from the uh, contact intro uh, from New York, and, um, and voila, so this is it. And um, so to, to, to start telling you a little bit this story, which is very important for me to share now in this context. I will, uh, I will start a little bit from my personal uh, biography in, term, in terms of formation. And, um, between real and unreal, fiction and uh, reality. And this, in that moment of my life, was too strong, was very strong. And um, I decided that even though I could stay there all night long, like I could end there, here, mm -hmm. and never get out, I needed to do a, a, a work, a deep work on my body first. So I left it there and I continued going around and oops. so let's say that this is time non-linear time going <laughs> around. Yes, and here is where I end up meeting the Axis syllabus in Brussels. Where I, and, and in this moment, like this work, I was still looking at it, but from very far. Like I was checking what João was doing. Like, but from far away. And I was completely into the Axis syllabus for very, very long. And then at a certain moment, I got back to Ceterre. And 
Now, after many years, because, yes, we are talking, I mean, I am involved with the Axis syllabus now, it's 13 years, and uh, I'm a teacher, blah, 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 but, uh, so it's a long time, it's 13 years, it's a long time, and I had time to go and go back to this. I, I always, I'm, I have the tendency to stay very long <laughs> into things. <laughs> Okay, so this is it. So now I can look at it and see what was in between this space. And, um, and I found out that actually they work for me, from my perspective, in a very similar way. Okay? And uh, we will talk about this. So. And um, so uh, I, I do it because it's useful to see the process of things, how for me they happen. No? So I fall in love, like, I like it very much and this is a strong effect for me to keep me on, on staying there. No? This is a fact. And then after a few days, not so many, like after a week, so when I meet Kira, I say, okay, uh, they were selling, they were, they were having like cards for classes and this was, a, there was a possibility to have one month class and me the first day I said, okay, I take the one month, not the two days or three days. No? And so the week after I met Barish, yeah? <laughs> And I said, whoa, these two com very different bodies, very, very different bodies, but they, 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 they teach through the same tools, the same, so, and this made me, so, uh, understand that two different bodies, I don't know the, could speak the same language because they were referring to principles which are the same operation for different values. And this for me was really enlightening. And uh, there I got to meet Ray. Sorry, what, what do you mean operation? Uh, something that you could repeat that's in the um, matrix, for example, of a movement, uh, but which is slightly different for everybody. But in the matrix, is the same. Yes? Fundamental. Yes, I mean, principles is a good way to, see, to say it, like, uh, and there I'm at pray. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. Because now I'm taking too much space here.
Okay. How do you? How do I uh, read uh, the principle of a principle? Is um, questioning, uh, creating space for questioning through three questions mostly, which are what, how, and when. And then shifting the perspective of these questions from the inside to outside. It means um, with this from an inner perspective to a more outside perspective, like from feelings, for example, a personal experience, from what I learned from outside, and then comparing this knowledge with science or with knowledge that other people collected. And this shifting of perspectives gives me the possibility to open up these questions and not to give the knowledge collected until there as truth or absolute truth. No. Okay. And uh, so now I will go more into it. This is just to, to give you a little uh, uh, scheme, if you say that. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, the real-time composition works on this same process to, uh, through looking at reality. Okay? But just from a larger or a further perspective. Okay, so I would say that, for example, uh, João, instead of looking at relations in the body, he would look more at, at relations uh, between bodies, more in general, also uh, outside the human body. So it could be also between two glasses, for example. Okay, and now we'll... Uh, <laughs> so, can I start? Yeah. Yeah, you can start. So I, um, I, I called this uh, little lecture "What a Body Can Do," which is a, a, a title from uh, a beautiful book from uh, Deleuze, Gilles Deleuze, which is a, a, a French philosopher. So. Ready? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to read and translate at the same time. Whenever you need, you can stop me, okay? If you, if you need some explanation. So I'm here to share with you a part of my research process. This part regards my personal vision of the Axis syllabus as the lens through which observe re, uh, the word, the word. I think that this lens has his own texture and in the way of proceeding, proceeding in the observation of reality brings all the values of its contents. You understand? I mean that the dynamic of the process has already in its dynamic the values of the contents, of the results. Um, mm. How can I... So, I will concentrate now only on these procedures, on the process, not on the content, okay? Because it's the process that I find, that I find in common between the axis syllabus and the real-time composition. So, how can I repeat a C star, for example, for over 20 years and not get tired? or bored. <laughs> to stay in the same place, I can continuously replace and change the point of view. And each time that each of these point of view change, change the result. So each time I change the perspective, the result of my observation is different. And this is how I can stay longer in the same place, just going a little bit around, shifting a little bit the, the perspective. 
So I cannot only go around the object, but I, con I can continuously go from inside to outside, what I said before. So passing through, comparing uh, internal perception, sensation, effects, with a more external perception through the vision, observation, and then the confrontation with the, a more, with the more structured knowledge and all the science that belong to our work. But first of all, something has to keep me attached, that something has to grab, not on me, like to hook, hook me. And this is what I can define as an effect, as I said, uh, in relation to Kira and my meeting with her. So, for example, uh, in, in the case of Frey, and uh, at the beginning of the whole story, he has a, a knee problem, no? knee injury. And this is an effect. This is something that gathers his attention on a place. And uh, it's, it's good to call it an effect in order to not give this, uh, this um, value to problem, a negative value to the word the problem. So um, this problem is, or effect is intended as something that touches me, that makes light on a place and attracts my attention. So if something hurts, for example, this is something, no? So in this moment, I stay there to look at the problem because I can't get rid of it, it's there. So I have to stay with it. And I stay there to look how it is and what can I do. And in this time that I hang around, I collect data and information based on sensation for sure, personal experience, and then going through um, comparison or uh, confronting with knowledge and sciences more or less exact. So making a synthesis, we could say that we first need an effect. We have an effect to something something that attracts my attention, that we can circumscribe, that we could say is this, is this. As if we would do a zoom in on a specific place. Yes? Yes? Affetto. Però non è una parola esatta. Affetto perché, because in, in, because in Italian we don't have this word. Like, it's, it, effect is more uh, something that touches you. Yes. Um, and then we have a sus suspension. This sus suspension is uh, the place where I consider the possibility of not knowing. And this, I think, is a place for bri brave heart. Like, you don't know, and you stay there. You don't run away. Or the place where the, the knowledge until here uh, we considered uh, as a knowledge uh, is not granted, is not a guarantee, and so I have to take on responsibility, or my own responsibility, and uh, take the time to observe and question, suspending judgment and expectations. And this suspension creates a space which is maybe the space for doubting, which wouldn't ex exist until that moment. If this space, it wouldn't exist before, where everything was was uh, in 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 a box of prejudice and presumptions. And there, I can take the time to formulate new questions and let emerge small differences. In, the, in my own reading of reality, which open up to unknown territories.
Can you follow me? Yes, it's clear enough? Okay. One more time, that last sentence. Yeah, so um, in, I can open up a space to formulate a new question and let little differences emerge. And, and these little, little differences give me the possibility to see new things, new, new possibilities, new territories, let's say. If there is something which yeah. you can also put three dots and <laughs> we will think about it. <laughs> it's okay. So the, the, the process is a way to translate for me uh, a sensibility. And the sensibility in the sense of ethic, philosophy, ecology, a sensibility towards the world. How do I position myself in the world? So there is then another moment of this process that, that is the place when in the middle of this unknown territory I manage to name things, to give a name give a name to something which happens. And this is the place, this is the moment where I transform the, per the perception of the instant in the cost construction of a duration. I transform the perception of the instant in the construction of a duration. The, the moment I say this is this and I give a name to it. And I think that this is a very important part for the axis syllabus process and in general for creative processes. And that's why, uh, I mean, it's not by chance that Kira, Francesca and Elisa were speaking in the last two days about translations and words and how do we name things. I think it's a central theme. Uh, Let's say that giving a name to, to, to something, we create the space or the emptiness, the empty space, for something, for a, um, a different shape to exist, a new shape to exist. This shape was not there before, but when you say it, it's like, okay, now it's there. But before, you know, when, uh, the, when, the, when Colombo arrives to, to America, he, the, the natives don't see the sails because this is not possible. They only see it when they are very, very close. So, but if you have the name already, then you can see. You allow the space for this thing to be possible. You know, to okay. Um, and this, I think that in uh, in Frey ha has a matrix in his own uh, history, personal biography. I guess that the fact that he's he has been learning many languages, and so uh, training how to translate his own uh, his himself from these different perspectives already trains a lot uh, this process of translation. And um, yes, and for me, for example, when I first m met uh, Kira and Barish and Frey, they were using uh, terminology which we don't use anymore, but and in, the, in, that, in that moment, for example, the, the use of terminologies was further from the, was less concrete, I would say. For example, we would use a station for the place where you bring the weight in the walking on the foot. But this was a way already to introduce a dynamic 
the, the fact that you use the idea of the train that passes through stations, it introduces the idea of dynamic, which was something that, that we wouldn't have before in our dance formation. Like, was, for me, it was something very subtle and very rich. So, and this went on. I mean, it's, a, it's an ongoing process, and, which is great. Um, so we have... Sorry, how do, you, how do they call it now, instead of station? Sometimes we, I don't know, I say banking, which is a different concept. It's like a river that is directed um, um, by, the, by the stones that are um, placed in the river, and the water gets, it's like swaps up the stone, and it gets redirected. So yes. the, the concept got refined. Yes. Yes. I mean, the difference is instead of Covid's bone, it was station. Yeah, this was something, but not only. Yes, but also. Mm. Yes. Um, um, okay. So we have a fact as first thing suspension, the suspension of judgment and letting this space open up, observation, um, collecting data, an attentive, recon, reco, uh, an attentive um, evaluation, we could say it's not the word, but of differences that, that could emerge. And then naming these differences, and then we have new subjects. Finally, you have something which is a new starting point to, again, rediscuss. And this is the ongoing process that we do uh, since so many years. And these same procedures are, are, are used uh, a bit through the eye that I'm giving to you from uh, João Fiadeiro. Um, yes, taking his perspective from further. And uh, so, in this sense, if instead of putting, for example, this model here, I would put a bottle of water. What we do is exactly the same. We look at it and we don't fall into a rushed answer. I ask to myself, now the principles, the principles, I ask to myself again, what, how, and when, and where. And um, if I just answer, this is a bottle, I, I, I could say this because I take this information from my previous knowledge, cultural, language, uh, or what I had to learn from before. Not this is a bottle, we all agree. But if I shift the question slightly, and instead of asking what it is, I ask what it has, then I have a wider list. It has water inside, it has an in and out, it has a plastic, it has a transparency, it has something which is closed in, it has a position in the space, it has many things. And as you can see, even if she, if she is writing, when you, when you say what it has, you take more space. You open up the space. It's like you are, uh, if you have a tissue, you do, you take all the, um, all the what? Fibers, exactly. You open up. You open up the space. There is also the question, what it can? 
what it can, of course, because then when I collected all these uh, questions about what it has, uh, for each one of these things which I, I name, I could imagine different possibilities for relations. So, if I come in and I drink the bottle, I am now uh, affirming that the, that the relation is with the water. But if I come in with another plastic something, the relation, I, I bow the relation towards plastic. Then this is not so much a bottle anymore. It's more plastic. And then going on, we will see if it's really about plastic. You know, and not anymore about bottles. And this is a way you can rewrite the past. This was a bottle, but in this moment, right now, could be just plastic. And we could have a, a speech about ecology and, you know, <laughs> something complete, which goes completely in another direction than if I put here, for example, a plate. You understand, if I put the plate here, already the direction of the relation of the bottle, of the bottle goes more towards a, a eating situation or, you know, something, okay. So, this work we will do next week. <laughs> <laughs> but these phases for the process are those that I find in common in the two words, which are uh, for me almost the same. It's and those I find it in common with what? With the two words? With the two words, with the axis syllables. Oh, and so the two yeah, different words. Yeah, with, with the two different words. And, um, and voila. So now I would um, read you a little um, part which is uh, part of a performance lecture which I did uh, with, uh, with some colleagues. And, um, and yes, one presentation of this lecture, and, and I want to do, I, I mean, I wish to, to share with you this uh, text because this is then my own translation of this process. This is what I'm working on now, in, on my own translation for creative processes, but not only for my, my life, which is a creative process <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um, so uh, now I, I was invited by Dasha in uh, Moscow uh, for a workshop, and I presented a, a little uh, um, performance in a, um, which was slightly different from the one I did in the months before, but the lecture was the same. But uh, the title was What is Real? What is Real? Let me in. Performance lecture for two or more. And this was the description, and I, I wish to share it with you as well. It's a study on the place and conditions where to meet the other is possible. We don't want to show anything. We are not seductive. We want to light up the desire to see, to imagine, to do something that lives in the tension that precedes its realization. The tension that precedes the realization. And then we will uh, I will explain it better, maybe later. We are lost in translation, but this unavoidable gap, this unavoidable gap, this space of attention we offer to each other is the place where communication happens. The encounter of the other is thus matter of faith and a, measure, a measurable gift measurable gift. So, I have chosen three words and the first word 
for me in the process is attention, the word attention. The practice of the attention concerns a state of alert waiting. This wait is the time that I concede to myself to observe, to meet the word, the luxury of staying in front of something without an expectation of realization. I am filled with desire, images, attachment. I dilate the time and space of the meeting to keep alive the tension between me and the other, as before ending. I stretch the here and now in front of the gorge of the end, and I stay in the relation. Just as after love, I guess, I think, in the erotic tension, an unknown fertile power is released, is launched, and I don't know what shape it will have. Cristina Campo, which is a, an Italian poet, describes imagination as an escape into will while attention is an ally of writing. It keeps inside of what is already there. We don't have to look for something which is not there. Everything is already there. We just have to look, see it, look at it, see it, or create the conditions for things to be seen. And she says, so I make um, uh, Citation, a quote, quote, quote. Souffrir pour quelque chose, c'est lui avoir accordé une attention extrême. Suffering for something, it means that you are giving some, um, an, an extreme attention. That's how Homer suffers for the Trojans, contemplates the death of Hector. That's how the Japanese sword, the master, doesn't distinguish his death from that of his opponent. Having accorded to something an extreme attention is having accepted today, suffer it until the end. And not only to suffer it, but also to suffer for it. To be a screen between it and whatever may put it in danger, inside and for it. To be a screen between, ah oh no, sorry, it means to have assumed ourselves, over ourselves, the weight of those obscure and ceaseless threats that are the preconditions of joy itself. And then she goes on, um, and, but then she says, every human mistake, poetic or spiritual, it is nothing but negligence, it, essentially. To ask someone not to distract ever, to restlessly preserve his faculty of attention from that misunderstanding of the, the imagination, from the hypnosis of the habits, it means to ask him to realize his maximal form. Can you, fo can you follow? Yes? Can you, can you be the last? <laughs> yeah. She, she says, she says, every human mistake, poetic or spiritual, 
it is nothing but negligence, essentially. What she means, what she means is, um, is it's it's like it's because they got distracted. <laughs> she says um, to ask someone to not distract ever, so to keep the attention all the time, to restlessly preserve his faculty of attention from the misunderstanding of the imagination. It means to not fall, fall into imagination, to not fall in the hypnosis of the habits, to not fall always in the same patterns that we do, but to keep attentive to what is there, to what is real, I would say. And real has a lot of, <laughs> of course, uh, we can, uh, um, it means, if you ask someone to do this, it means to ask him to realize his maximum form. And then she continues. It means to ask something very close to sanctity in a time, in these times, that seems just to pursue with blind, furry and terrifying success the total divorce of the human mind from its faculty of attention. Well, can you say this? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> from, it means to ask something? It means to ask something very close to sanctity. To what? Sanctity. Sainthood? Sanctity. Saints. Yes. Sage. It means I have something very close to sanctity. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said centipede. <laughs> Sorry. Which is um, in a time that seems just to pursue with blind fur fury and terrifying success the total divorce of the human mind from its faculty of attention. Diversity or divorce? Divorce. 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 Oh, it's here? I couldn't find it. No. No. It's not. Yes. Well, it doesn't matter. Divorce. Okay, so this uh, practice of attention is something that I'm working a lot. And uh, in the last uh, months, uh, I did uh, a, produ a theater production uh, four months in, the, in a theater in the middle of the woods, and uh, I was proposing a uh, work a lot in the nature, and, uh, and this, when, when you start to feel this attention rising in a, in a group of 12 people is like it's really powerful and uh, this is something i'm working a lot on and i continue remain attentive then i say to myself one millimeter of reality contains the whole history of the world look don't be tired i say it's your turn. Then the other words I've chosen, uh, it's, a, it's a, a nucleus of words, uh, which are effect, passion, and central fire. Uh, passion in Italian has, uh, is uh, ardore, ardore, which is a bit different from passion, but I couldn't find uh, Burning. Mm. Ardore. The of the world is ardere. Uh, yes. Which is, uh, Closer the to. The fire. Yes, fire exactly. Is combustion, no? Exactly. And I continue. So, what do I put in the center? The fire. 
which is at the same time in Italian the focus. So I put in the center the focus, the fire. I take position. I have to focus the lens of the camera, of my own projections, look carefully for that position where I'm neither too close, I'm neither too close, too close, because if I'm too close, I don't see anything and I get confused and blind. Also, if I go. Yeah. <laughs> Or too far, if I, if I go too far. <laughs> <laughs> if I go too far, I get detached. And nothing touches me or belongs to me anymore. So I have to find this, this right distance where I am in the place where I can see where I can let the fire burns. In this place, the fire burns and lights countless possibilities of meeting. There, in that point, I give up the crown of the ego. And it's not me anymore, nor you. It is another place that didn't exist until now. It's the place of the encounter, of the meeting. When the fire burns in the center, all the surrounding image unfolds in a complex landscape of layers of bodies. And I take part, I'm part of millions of possible relationships. And then the last, we are, we are almost done, the last is to name. To give a name to things, it formalizes, it shapes. It is the moment in which I take the responsibility of transforming the perception of the moment, of that moment <coughs> that I choose in the construction of a duration. It is to let that moment live and give space to it. I'm here now, like you. I lay my feet on the ground, like you. I have my head in the, in the air, like you. I'm listening to you. That's how it is in the end. That's how it is in the beginning, at the beginning. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and thanks always to my mm -hmm. masters, which is also a practice that I do a lot. Each time I do something, I say thanks. To my masters, which, um, which is something very important for me to be grateful to the people that and uh, and these are some of them and um, and there is this poet with with whom i'm working a lot and she says uh, dear masters she has a poem that I, I cannot tell you now but she says dear masters i bring you with me as knives because these are my weapons, no? My, no? And uh, so this is the master. The master, yes. So, voila, this is it. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you want to say something. to give to three of my masters which are here.
this. Ibari to, to Kira, a body, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you if you want to, I mean, I don't know what time is it now. Thank you very much. No, thank you. It's really beautiful. Uh, uh, four forty-five. It's, it's four forty-five. So we could stay longer if you want to ask me things or or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to write? No. I think it's okay. But in this being lost, I also found a lot of inspiration. And I wanted to ask the last part you were talking about, you're talking about your creative process, mm -hmm. how, you, how you make pieces. Mm -hmm. Right? This is what you were talking about? Yes. Could you summarize? Could you simplify the mm. main points? Mm. In it? Yes, it's not so much about having a formula to, to create pieces, but these are, let's say, what I wanted to share with you are uh, the fundaments, the, the three places where I hang around a lot, uh, which are uh, fundaments for me um, for creative processes and a lot is a, that's it attention and then circumscribing this uh, central fire the thing that is burning in the moment the effect the thing that keeps me there that attracts me you know? and then the, the formulation now this formulation, this that's naming, yeah. And the thing that keeps you there wouldn't be the first one. Attention. 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 The attention is a practice. Is uh, the attention for me has to do with this place. Huh? That's why I say attention. If, because if I'm too busy with future or past, I can't see what is there in the moment. In, in, uh, in uh, Brazil, they call uh, this, I, I just got to know, I think this is absolutely great, but they call panic attacks uh, future attacks. It's the future that is attacking. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and it is like this, you know. It's like <laughs> the future is attacking when you get in panic. <laughs> so yes, it has a lot to do about how how do you stay? How how do you keep staying there? where you are.
working in, in a, this last month with a producer in a publicity job, and she was very anxious all the time. And she's the producer, I was the choreographer, so it was not my role to decide where go to eat, where go to do, what to do and things. And all the time that uh, the group of people that she had to manage had to take a decision, she gets stressed and she wants to take the, they, they take the decision quick. Yes. <laughs> and I have, I have a good uh, confidence, non-confidence, confidence. Non -confidence uh, yeah. Good relationship. Yes. Uh, good relationship, yes. We uh, have both Italian and other people were not, and it was good. And uh, I would say, do passive direction. It's not that you are passive and then you, but uh, don't, don't put, just wait and look. The only fact that you are there, it's enough. Because you are the director. <laughs> but uh, instead of putting yes, more yes, yes. information, and at the end, sometimes say, hey, she was giving me a. It's like, working. I need to ask you one. It's working. Okay. <laughs> yes, because you, look, you, you, make a lot, you make a lot of noise around things. Exactly. And, uh, it, it, there you lose a lot of things. Yes. I just. I, I oh, sorry. Can I just of course, no. I thought we were done. Sorry. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, if you want to develop a little bit, I'm very curious when you <coughs> speak about this um, attention as a, as a, 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 a kind of um, presence, that attitude, you know? Yes. If you could be a little, go a little bit more deeper, no? Yes, for me, uh, so attention that is uh, attention. Attention. Attention, like, yes, uh, attention, like this. Because I tell you because why I do this, ask, uh, this question, because many times I work with performers that uh, show me that they are attentive. Ah, oh, okay. It's not something that you have to, uh, in my perception, many times I, I see that the effort to show that you are attentive and present to everything, yeah. like... Uh, no, it's uh, not so much about this, it's more about... Uh, it's when, for example, if you imagine it's when you build up the tension of, for example, if you are, um, um, if we start now here to prepare a table uh, or, or, or um, the instruments to play music, for example. The whole time, if we would look at the situation, you could stay there long because this has a certain tension the whole uh, construction. So the, the, the practice of the attention for me, it's just to stay in this tension without an expectation for what comes afterwards. Just to, st to stay there. It's very much related. Uh, so it, it doesn't for me have a certain uh, uh, presence, quality, in terms of uh, performative, uh, it can be whatever, you know, it's, it's more an attitude uh, of, of working or, th or staying into things. <coughs> and uh, yes, it's, yes, and, and it is a lot to do with this shift between, uh, from uh, intention to act tension you have you have attention attention towards something yes I think. but then yes but then in the practice of of the work we do I think also in the axis in the last when yeah when for example when you start to get bored of something how do you continue staying there how do you keep Staying there, just this. Thank you. I wanted to ask you um, 
about the naming process. Just how do you know when to name if you're in attention mode? Because things are happening all the time and it's just a decision that you have to make to name it, no? I mean, how do you, uh, how is it in your process or in this process that you decide to, or even in the access syllabus that you decide to name it? Yes, I think when it gets more attention. So when so, there's more tension. Yes, yeah, so when, when the, the things start to take more space, more space, more space, and then you can really say, yes, is this. I see. Like, for example, if in this case I have uh, this, and then I, I ask to myself, what, what does this has? And I say plastic, blah, 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 liquid, uh, uh, some writing, uh, the pink thing, uh, the water, wet, inside, outside, blah, blah, blah. And then I say this, no. Mm. Yes. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> or, uh, yes, and then this comes, for example. That we don't know yet. But if another plastic thing comes, then you know that it's not anymore about the bottles or the drinking or the tool for drinking. It's more about plastic. It's something that emerged from the relations okay. that gets more evident, you know? It takes space. It takes space, yes. It like emerged. But this is not something you put on, but it's something which emerged from the relations. Which it's, like what, it's like when we become our names. Exactly. <laughs> As we grow up. <laughs> this is Natalie. No, no longer the baby. <laughs> Maybe a uh, question, uh, but maybe just to refer to that you name by putting things into context, right? That's what you mean with plastic? You, you, I mean, I mean, what I mean is that, I mean, <laughs> things, uh, there's no, there's no tabula rasa. So things are always in relation to something else. So then it depends from which relation is getting activated between, among all the possibilities. Yes? Yeah, that's why I uh, wondered about the example that you put in the sale of the when Christopher Columbus sailed there and the natives uh, could name it or something you know, else. Mm -hmm. can, can we see uh, uh, something on the internet? Is it possible to get? It's not allowed, but I allow, <laughs> allow it to you. Where, where I'll show you something on, on the computer. Yeah. So Everyone's going to see the password. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you on your computer? On, uh, it's not mine, but yes. In this I computer. can make it private. No, yes. but it's... Uh, but now I don't know where the... Close your eyes, everybody. You don't see the password. <laughs> In the, um, but this we will see next week. Uh, but the, the relation, um, so there is a moment, the, the moment where you name is the moment that we call the common plan. It's the place where all the people is around the improvisation knows what is about. So this is not the place. 
This is not the place yet. It could be with the third position, if it's third bottle counts, for example. Mm -hmm. Then we, we could know, now this is not a good example. But the, the third position is a relation that doesn't relate to this only, doesn't relate to this only, but to their relation. It's and a what? Third. It's a third. It's a relation which relates not to me, not to you, but to what is in the middle. Not to this, not to that, but to their relation. And this place, when we recognize, we can, this is the moment when we name. And the example which I did uh, with Colombo. And between two people, it could be, it could be between two persons. Yes, it could be also with yourself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's the same, no? It's the same. But then the, the in between is the third thing. Yes. The, uh, yes. The it's, the it's this place. It's the in between. It's this place. It's not this, it's not this, it's this place. It's and the in place one, that you get in place. relation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For drivers or bicycle or yes. cyclists? For, for, for drivers, mm. but also for, for bicycles, because then look out for cyclists. Okay, this is transport for London. It's great, no? It's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't answer your question. Did I answer your question? <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. 